to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa, and today I have the perfect recipe for you, not just because Valentine's Day is right around the corner, but this is truly one of my favorite desserts, and I don't think I've ever met a person who didn't like creme brulee. Now this is such a great recipe because it is so delicious, so impressive, and actually so easy to make, which shocks a lot of people. Every time I make it, people are always asking me, how did you make this? It's so simple, guys, and there's only four ingredients. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to make this creme brulee, and if you would like the exact recipe and some further tips, please check out my blog post at ladolcelisa.com. I will link it in the description box down below. So let's get started and let's make this delicious creme brulee for Valentine's Day. So our oven is going to be set to 325 and I'm doing that right now because this literally takes minutes to make. I'll probably finish this before my oven even goes off. So the ingredients in this creme brulee are so simple. You can make just one or you can make four like me. So this is what you'll need to make four creme brulees. You'll need two cups of whipping cream. This is heavy whipping cream and it is 35%, so that is really important. So I'm going to measure out two cups of heavy cream and place it into this saucepan. And now I'm going to be placing this pot of heavy cream on the stove on a medium to low heat. And I'm going to let this warm up. Right before it boils, I will be taking that off. This will take about five to seven minutes. It just depends on how fast your cream goes. Okay, so while I'm heating up the cream, I also just put the kettle on because we're going to be needing water for the water bath to cook these creme brulees in. So I'm doing that right now as well. So now is the fun part, and this literally takes seconds to do. I have four egg yolks in this small bowl here, and to the egg yolks, I'm going to be adding sugar and the vanilla extract because these are going to be vanilla bean creme brulees. So first things first, let's get the sugar. We need a quarter of a cup of sugar or four tablespoons. So I'm adding the sugar to the egg yolks and to the egg yolks as well I'm going to be adding my vanilla. You can of course use an actual vanilla bean and I have the instructions on my blog post but I have an easier way to get those nice vanilla beans into this recipe and it's so simple to do. Now if you just have vanilla extract you can add that and that is fine but I also have vanilla bean paste which is great because it's going to add those beautiful little vanilla bean seeds without having to actually buy a vanilla bean. So I'm going to be using two teaspoons of each, making four teaspoons all together. But of course you can substitute this for all extracts or all vanilla bean paste. You can see how thick this is. And I'm also just going to be adding my vanilla extract as well for some extra vanilla flavoring. I'm just going to give everything a quick whisk to incorporate all of these ingredients. Okay, and just keep the whisk in there because we're going to need that when the cream is finally ready. Now that literally only took a few seconds. It's so simple. So now that this egg yolk mixture is ready, we are just waiting for that cream to get warm enough to combine. This cream has almost reached a boiling point and now it is ready to combine with this nice vanilla yolky sugar mixture. So I'm slowly going to add this to the bowl and we are careful not to quickly cook our egg yolk, so slowly adding that in while continuously whisking. So, and now that our liquid creme brulee is ready, I'm going to be adding it to these little ramekins. They take about three fourths of a cup, but since this has a little pouring spout, I'm just going to eye it. So you'll notice that all of the vanilla beans are at the bottom, so I carefully just add them to each of the ramekins, that way they all get an equal amount of vanilla. So a great little tip is to grab your blowtorch and you can quickly just blowtorch over any bubbles that you see on the surface. This is just an easy trick to get rid of those little surface bubbles that might appear. And now my water is ready, so I'm going to add the hot water to this pan. I can't tell you how much water I use because everyone's baking dish might be different, but you basically need enough water to fill the ramekins at least halfway to three quarters of the way up the walls. And now we are going to place this into the oven for 40 minutes, and our oven is set to 325. So now we just wait the 40 minutes to cook the creme brulees. Okay, so I just took these little creme brulee pots out of the oven. So I'm going to be waiting at least 10 to 15 minutes before I can take these out of the water bath and then place them into the fridge. They will need to set in there. And I feel like at least two to three hours is the minimum amount of time that you should let them set in the fridge. You can even set them overnight or up to four days. It's totally up to you. So we just have to unfortunately wait a bit before we can eat them. But guys, the hard part is over. <laughs> this was so easy to make. So I'll see you guys once they are set and we can then torch them and eat them. two and a half 
half hours, I would say. And these creme brulees actually look pretty set, so two to three hours is a good recommended time. Otherwise, overnight. And you could tell that they're set because when you first take them out of the oven and you remove them from the water bath that we have them cooking in, you can jiggle them a bit and you'll see that the center almost looks like it's a little bit jiggly. But when they're set, you won't see any jiggle anymore. It will look quite stiff which is perfect, so that means we can now top them with some sugar and set those blow torches on them. Now, if you don't have a blow torch, I highly recommend you get one because it is such a fun kitchen tool and they're quite inexpensive. You can pick them up at Amazon or your local kitchen store and I mean, they are such a great tool for caramelizing anything. It's super fun to use. But of course, if you don't have one and you would like to use the double broiler of your oven, I have instructions on my blog post, legilchalisa.com. So again, check that link out in the description box for further information. But the steps are basically the same, so we wanna top them with some sugar first. So what I like to use is this coarse sugar. You can, of course, use the same sugar that you cooked these in, but I like to use a coarse, thicker sugar. This is just an organic cane sugar, and I find that it is really nice when it comes to torching them and creating that crispy top. So I would say about a tablespoon of sugar per topping each. You can of course use a little bit less, but I like that nice, thick, crispy, burnt, caramelized top. You wanna really spread the sugar evenly on the top of this. And basically what you want to do is you wanna put the sugar and torch it when you're ready to eat. Like I said, they are great kept in the fridge for up to, I believe, four days. I mean, you could even stretch that out a bit more, but just to be safe, let's say up to four days. <laughs> so right now I'm going to be torching two of them. Okay, so I'm going to grab my blowtorch and turn it on. And you're just going to torch this until you see that the sugar is nice and caramelized. Some spots might even look a little bit burnt, but that's kind of what we're looking for. That creates the iconic crispy caramelized top, which I love. When you're torching it, the rim gets very hot, so careful not to burn yourself. Now, when you are using the blowtorch, you want to make sure to get every little crevice you don't want to leave gaps because that won't make a nice crisp crust just an entire coating of this burnt caramelized sugar top is what we're looking for now let's dig in and let's see if we can get that iconic crunch and the creamy inside now this came from the fridge but since we use the blowtorch it should be a little bit warm and creamy inside see do you hear that crisp topping okay so let's dig in Mmm. Mmm. This is honestly the best creme brulee ever. The very bottom is cool and the top is like warm and melty. And you have this crispy, sugary crust on top that is so crunchy. Mmm. Mmm. You can really taste that vanilla in there. It is so delicious. And basically, this does not taste eggy at all. One of my pet peeves, not only is not getting that crisp crust, but is an eggy tasting creme brulee. This is not eggy, this is so creamy and delicious, and you can see the flecks of vanilla bean at the bottom. You have to make this, especially for Valentine's Day, as it is such a romantic dessert. And I really don't know anyone who doesn't like creme brulee, so I'm sure you will make your loved ones a very happy you saw that this was such an easy dessert to make. The steps can take a little bit long in terms of waiting process, but it literally took minutes to whip up and it only had four ingredients. So guys, you have to give this a try. So simple, so easy. Don't forget to check out the exact ingredients and of course directions that are written on my blog post at ladolchalisa.com. It'll be in the description box down below. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this one to come in the future. So thank you so much for watching and if this applies to you, happy Valentine's Day. Otherwise, happy baking. Sounds pretty hard, let's dig in. So hard, <laughs> what should I say? And now let's crack into this baby. <laughs> Looks like a perm. I, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Look at little Luna's apron. <laughs> and that just not. <laughs> this apron was called Dolly and me, and I feel like it was for a little kid in her doll. <laughs> but if it's little Luna, <laughs> you're so cute, Baba. She looks like a superhero.